Hi everyone, welcome to another Honeystocks.com weekend analysis and this one's going to be going out on the 20th of November uh, 2021. Now before I do the usual and switch over to my screen share and of course walk you through all the, the charts and all the analysis that I guess you know everybody tunes in for, I just want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for the kind words, the emails, the messages over the last eight weeks or so. I put out a couple of analysis videos recently and I believe that many of you have done quite well from some of the individual names. So congrats everybody that the market has been on a complete rocket ship for the last couple of months. And of course, I hope everybody has done very, very well from that. Now, the theme of the, I guess, the questions that I'm receiving is can this continue? Can the rocket ship continue higher? Um, well, of course, I've got some charts that I want to walk through and I hope that everybody gets some insight and the, the professional view of the markets. So a couple of things to get out there off the bat is one, I'm not a day trader. I couldn't think of anything worse. Um, my time horizon is generally weeks to months. I'm primarily a trend follower with elements of swing trading. If you were to sit down and have a beer with me, I think I'd probably tell you that I'm more of a technical investor, but my work applies to, to many different styles. So like I said, hopefully you get some value from it. Let's dive into the charts. Let's see what the market's telling us and um, have a good Christmas. Now, as always, before I get into this, please do pause the video. Make sure you're comfortable with that before watching any further. Basically just says that there's not any investment advice and to not be silly and to do all your own due diligence. Maybe to give myself a little bit of credibility, I'm working my way towards my CMT, technical analysis, is something that I'm widely known for in professional circles. And I hope you get a lot of value from this. Three weeks ago, I put out an analysis. This is a performance of the, the stocks covered in that analysis. Feel free to, to go and check that out. I did another one about a month before that had similar results. So I understand it's very much about what have you done for me lately in this game. I think with coming into September, I was highlighting the seasonality effect and to get cautious, I called the bottom in the, the NASDAQ. And of course, massive performance from tech. And if you want to go a little bit further back on my website, there's a full analysis of how I got defensive and got all my clients ahead of the, the market crash in 2020. But the only thing I ask is if you are getting some value from this or you do get some value from it, give the video a like. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm. It's the cost of entry. It's completely free analysis. So it would be very much appreciated. So let's dive into the charts. Now, I'm just going to spend five minutes walking you through the broader market, just the themes and the areas that I think make a lot of sense to talk about. Now, something that I've been highlighting is the seasonality effect coming into the fourth quarter. Now, there's many analysts, there's many uh, retail investors, etc., that I interact with that don't understand why the market's moving up. Now, for me, what we're seeing at the moment is perfectly normal. Now, what this little diamond here is, it just shows us that we're just currently slightly above the, the standard November. So what we're seeing in November here isn't a, a huge surprise to me at all. I've been calling for a bullish fourth quarter. That's ultimately what's playing out. And I hope to see it continue into December. Now, when we look at the consumer discretionary chart relative to the staples chart, we can see that this quite often signals reversals when we get to extreme readings here with RSI momentum. Now, for me, we're in a very healthy bullish range at the moment with this ratio. If consumer discretionary is outperforming staples, that tells me the market's reasonably healthy. Now, technology, I guess, is the, the big one at the moment. I think most of us are probably enjoying some of the, the parabolic moves that, that we've been seeing in the likes of NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft, etc. 
the the question I'm getting a lot is, Sam, can this continue? Now, what I want to kind of walk you through is, yes, we're now breaking out to, to all-time highs with technology. Yes, we are in an overbought condition at the moment, so a small near-term pullback is, is reasonably expected. But a couple of charts that I've been sharing with our clients and members over the last few weeks has been this ratio between technology and the Dow, and we are starting to get outperformance. So what this tells me is if you're on the fence about you know whether you want to, to move into you know, maybe some of the industrial names or technology, this tells me that the triple Qs, the names aligned with technology are outperforming the, the Dow. So you probably want to be looking at technology stocks. We've also got technology, which is XLK relative to the S&P 500. Now I posted this chart to social media a few weeks ago, and ultimately again, that, that is ultimately played out. So technology has been on a rocket ship, as we all know. And for me, it, it could only just be getting started. That That's certainly the hope. But that said, there are a couple of headaches that I have this weekend. Um, now, the, the S&P 500, again, is breaking out to all-time highs, but something that I understand is where is my thesis of a bullish environment start to fall apart? So I, I like to just kind of mark up on charts where I want to start to think about defensive action. I always default to the individual names. I don't tend to overthink the, the broader market too much because I think it all comes down to the individual stocks for the 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 names that you own in the charts but what i am aware of is the the failed breakout now the dow jones industrial average is obviously breaking out it broke out to all-time highs now it's obviously pulled back whilst technology has been ripping higher which the uh, the chart for technology versus the dow can demonstrate but if we start to break below significant levels that would tell me that there's there's a potential question mark with the broader market and could we anticipate in advance a, a bit of a, a healthy pullback stroke corrective phase, whatever you want to call it. This is my big headache of the weekend is the small caps, which is uh, a good gauge of risk sentiment with the market obviously small caps if they're breaking out to all-time highs then that tells us that it's a very much a risk on environment but when we start to get failed breakouts again it sometimes warrants defensive action so for me what happens here on monday and tuesday is going to be key is it going to just be a, a bit of a bear trap and rips higher i don't know you don't know nobody knows but what we will do is keep an eye on this chart and if it starts to break lower then for me it probably warrants um, some defensive action in some areas of portfolio and that's the way that i'm looking at things at the moment we are in a bullish environment there are stocks that are ripping but you have to understand that a lot of names have ripped 50 60 percent and you know digestion of those gains is likely at some point we've got growth versus value uh, breaking out again uh, to new highs so I guess those of you that maybe don't remember over summer I guess the the growth names taken out a bit of a, a massive hit technology taking a massive hit and that was not the area to be in uh, the value names the boring industrials the energy names those were the areas to be in um, but now we are starting to see growth move above value in this ratio so this tells me that I want to be looking at growth names ahead of value names. And then we've got semiconductors breaking out relative to the S&P 500. Again, just to reiterate, a lot of the semiconductor names have already ripped 50, 60%. And it'll be very, very interesting to see if the, the market can sustain that when we've got the breakout in this ratio. So what does that mean for, I guess, the individual names? Well, I've got around 20, maybe 25 individual names that I think warrant some consideration over the forthcoming week or two. Of course, as always, I reserve the right to change my thesis on 30 seconds notice. 
Um, I obviously cannot update my charts every single day on social media. So it's very much down to your own individual process and how you treat these charts. But we have Apple breaking out to all time highs now. I think something that I would highlight with Apple, and this is a message that I've highlighted to our clients and members over the last few months is Apple for me is more appealing on these big pullbacks. Now, the reason for that is breakouts often fail with Apple, but ultimately that doesn't mean that breakouts are going to continue to fail. So I guess if I'm not highlighting Apple breaking out to new all time highs, I probably should just hand back my market analyst card and go and do something else. So I think certainly it's, um, it's done very, very well for those that have been buying the pullback, but it is breaking out of a base above its all time highs. And um, I hope to see it continue. Solar, uh, I've been highlighting this one for our clients over the last couple of weeks, just waiting for a breakout here above 65 bucks. Something that I'm very conscious of is the the rotations that we see within the market. Now, I'm always analyzing and trying to get ahead of these rotations to figure out where you know capital could potentially get allocated to. And I'm seeing quite a few of the solar names start to set up. Uh, and I think Jinko Solar, I think if it breaks out of a base above 65 bucks, I think could make a lot of sense. Lithium Americas is, has been incredible for disclosure. I own plenty of Lithium Americas. Um, sent this one out for our clients on a breakout of the base here. It's up 30%. Now, it put in solid earnings this week and they have also announced an agreement to buy Millennial Lithium. Now, the market has responded massively, uh, favorably to that news. It is breaking out now above another pivot level. So again, if there's continuation on this on Monday, I, I think uh, Lithium Americas it could really start to get moving. It's only a $4 billion market cap as well. So um, I want to, to obviously be in that trend for as long as it's as, as it's moving up. I'm, I'm not second guessing short term and near term market tops. Disclosure, I own plenty of NVIDIA. I've been asked a lot about NVIDIA over the last couple of months since I started covering it. I am looking at this as probably the next trillion dollar market cap. Um, and I've got a, an upper target here of around 375. Ultimately, I've just applied a, a trailing stop loss to it that I, I have very specific uh, parameters set for this to keep me in the trend for as long as possible. And ultimately, my risk management will take me out the trade when price tells me to, to get out. Again, I'm not second guessing the, the tops, but I, I may take some off the table if it starts to get towards 375. Uh, plug power again broke out of a base clean energy name uh, holding its 20 day simple moving average again this is one of our high conviction alerts we sent out on a breakout uh, i own plenty of plug power and uh, hope to see this continue on the back of clean energy catching a bid uh, textron breaking out of a base dating back to 2007 as we can see price has a memory. Um, I don't see what's not to like if it if it's above this level here uh, around 74 bucks. If it starts to break below that level, then that's, you know, a potential headache for me. But ultimately, I hope to see uh, a breakout continue here. CF Industries looks to be breaking out. We've got an inverse head and shoulders pattern. It broke out here in October. It has put in what looks to be a very successful retest which is perfectly normal behavior for price and it looks to be catching a bid. So ultimately, I, I hope to see CF Industries uh, start to move uh, a lot higher from here. We've got it's Simon Property Group. Again, massive base breakout over the last month. And I'm looking at this as a potential flag pattern. I think if it can break out above this level here, I think that's probably good news for those of you that are holding Simon Property. Again, I think it's fairly, fairly valued, P, good solid PE ratio, and we'll see how far it wants to go. Um, Okta, a very, very frustrating name, I guess, for those of you that have been holding, but I think 
with Okta, there's going to be a resolution to this one way or the other. Um, I was actually looking at this to, to buy it this week if it could get a breakout of this consolidation triangle pattern. Ultimately, that hasn't played out, but I am going to consider it on a, a move to the lower end of this range. If there's some kind of bounce, which I would expect at this level, um, then I would consider buying Okta. I suspect earnings will be the, the catalyst for this one in either direction. Uh, but as we can see, it's doing a whole lot of nothing for the last 12 months. But I think there's very, very close to getting a resolution one way or the other. After my analysis uh, a few weeks ago, I got uh, a lot of questions on my analysis of the payment processing companies and essentially PayPal. Because what I was saying three weeks ago was, look, those of you that are invested in a lot of these payment processing companies need to be aware of the Bitcoin Lightning Network and the implications that this is going to have for many of these names. Now, it's no surprise to me that since the Bitcoin Lightning Network has started to get a lot of traction, we're starting to see the payment processing companies start to fall off a cliff. Now. PayPal was one of those. Now, I highlighted the, this level here three weeks ago, basically saying like, you need to be very, very careful if you're holding PayPal because there is a scenario here where we could break lower on the back of the news that um, the disruption that we're seeing with the Bitcoin Lightning Network. And ultimately, that's playing out. Now, it doesn't mean PayPal is obviously a bad company. It's a great company. Uh, I use PayPal. Um, it's offering opportunity at some point, but for me, I'm just going to wait and, and see where we, we start to kind of get a bottom in this. Um, it does look like it's breaking down. It looks like it's in a bit of distress, but I think it's one of those names that will offer opportunity um, in the near term, not too distant future. But I will look for some technical signals to, to tell me when, when it's a good time to buy it back, because when you look at the disruption, and you look at the, the PayPal's versus the Silvergate Capitals, um, we can clearly see that the market is, is responding favorably to the, the, the financial tech names that are incorporating a lot of the, the cryptocurrencies, the altcoins, the bitcoins, etc. Um, and Silvergate Capital is breaking out of a massive base. Um, I've been advising our clients to buy this above 190, which they've been doing hand over fist the, over the last couple of weeks, and it looks to be playing out okay at the moment. JP Morgan have upgraded it and put a, a price target of around 300 bucks on it. Um, ultimately, I, I, I'm not placing any limits on, on how far a trend can run. Uh, again, we just need to apply some rules and uh, robust uh, trade management risk management protocols. The metaverse. Now, I put out a, a blog on Monday just highlighting some names that, that I thought warranted a, a bit of consideration. Now, I made a bottom call on, on Facebook uh, a few weeks ago on the strength of the, the 200-day simple moving average supported by a bullish divergence. Now, ultimately, that has played out pretty well i think and we're looking here at an upper target of around 385 on this i, I do expect meta facebook whatever you want to call it to, to go ahead and, and test those all-time highs um, fantastic company if you talk about a money-making machine it's, uh, it's certainly up there and i think it's fairly valued as well a solid pe ratio we've got google Again, breaking out to, to new all-time highs. I think this is, for me, a, a Fibonacci chart. And um, ultimately, I've got a target there up at 4,500. Of course, very much dependent on whether the market can sustain and, and, and doesn't correct, etc. Um, but ultimately, uh, I hope to see it move towards that level. Lots of questions on INMD. Now... With INMD, I, I like the stock very, very much. I've been looking at buying this on a breakout above $100. I actually have one of my clients has been in this dating back to, to January. And as we can see, this is a is, is 
beautiful as an uptrend is, is going to get. It, it holds its 50-day simple moving average and its 100-day simple moving average uh, pretty well. But I think it needs to break out above $100 for it to be appealing to me or pull back to the 50-day or the 100-day. I think it is showing signs of fatigue at the moment. So you'll often hear me say pullbacks and uptrends offer opportunity. I think this is one of those that, that is going to offer opportunity pretty soon. We've got Airbnb um, moving very, very well. I actually covered this one in my social media analysis back in August. I get asked about it all the time. Um, it's moving beautifully. Again, just having you know logical trade management, risk management parameters set makes a massive difference. It keeps you in the trade for longer. And uh, ultimately, I hope to see it test the, the $220 level. Again, Datadog, I've been covering this one for months. No change, the, the, the trend is intact. It's as beautiful a trend as you're going to get. And I'm not placing any limits on how far it wants to go. Salesforce, again, broke out of a massive 12 month base, it broke out above 285. I covered this one a month ago and ultimately it's, it's still moving. And if technology is going to continue to move, you would expect Salesforce to go with it. Now, AMD has been massive. Now, I owned this until around maybe a week, 10 days ago or so. I bought it down at 100 on this, at this support level, got through and I think it was something like 40, 42% or something I'd taken off it. But ultimately, the, the trade is still moving higher. Now, I am looking to... to buy AMD back. I'm looking for an opportunity on a pullback because I've got a 190 target on AMD. Um, and Terror Resources, massive support level here that I think will tell us whether or not it's going to, to, to pull back to the $15 level. I think if it breaks below this level at 18, I think you can expect it to probably go and test 15. Ultimately, I'm hoping to see this level hold its support and um, potentially look to buy it. But again, we'll see how the, the market plays out early next week. Etsy breaking out of a, a base. It's no secret science to this. We're, we're looking for these bases and ultimately it's moving. We've got the, the trailing stop loss is now above the initial entry level. And yeah, it, it looks to be moving pretty well. Snowflake. Again, it's approaching our upside objective here at 430 bucks. I've been covering this one for our clients since this failed breakdown here and it's moving beautifully. Um, it has started a new trend on this breakout and ultimately, as I said, I hope to see that move towards 430. Cloudflare, again, massive, massive performer this year and um, ultimately it, it's broken out above its $200 level. Although the, the trailing stop loss in this one is up at 190, I would actually be inclined to use the $200 level for risk management purposes. The, the psychological levels in the market do hold a bit of weighting, the $100, the $200, the $1,000. Um, it's a, a side of technical analysis that I think many probably neglect or don't understand. So, um, Ultimately, I hope to see that one move a lot higher. One of the metaverse names that was in my blog uh, on Monday, it broke out this week. Massive, massive performer. Again, covered this one back in September. As you all know, I don't use the magical hindsight indicator, um, but pullback reasonably be expected. That's ultimately what we've seen yesterday. Um, so as long as we're above this level, as long as it, it, if it pulls back to this 175 level and puts in a successful retest, it's probably a, a dip you, you can buy. Zscaler, again, moving beautifully, 50 period simple moving average uptrend. Uh, I posted this chart to Twitter uh, back in October and the, the thing has absolutely ripped since then. Uh, ultimately, I hope to see it continue to move. Same with Home Depot. I get asked about this all the time because I covered this one uh, back in October. Um, again, 
just apply some kind of risk management strategy if if you're if you're wondering if you should sell or not i get you know the whole investing side of things and the i guess the, the dollar cost averaging down etc i actually prefer to to dollar cost average up um, you know if you look at something like home depot i i would much rather buy it on a breakout and then just let it set up again buy it again it compounds your gains and um, that's really what trend following is all about uh, we've got roblox again was in the blog on monday the, the things ripped 30 percent um, that's the the chart from the blog and um I think we can reasonably expect a pullback on this one, uh, given it has moved 30% in a week. Microsoft breaking out to new all-time highs, can't ignore it. Trade Desk um, broke out above $100. I think if with something like Trade Desk, I think it makes a lot of sense to kind of look for a potential pullback opportunity on it. I think for me, it's a Fibonacci chart, broke out of a base. Um, I, um, Given this to our clients last week on a breakout above 100, it's obviously up 7 8% at the moment. But I think for those of you that are maybe looking to, to get in on Trade Desk, it's, it's obviously a great company. Um, I think if it pulls back to that $100 level and, and catches a bid, then it's probably, again, a, a, one of those that you might want to consider as a retest entry. Valley National Bank, um, I think above 15 bucks. Again, very low PE ratio. A lot of the, the banks seem to be in that kind of same boat. Um, many of them are looking like they want to break out of these bases, but of course there's many of them that are that are not looking so great. But, you know, VLY looks to be half decent. We've got Amazon, again, similar to Apple, where for me it is, it's actually more appealing on a, a, a pullback. But... Um, yeah, looking for a breakout there. And I think if it can get above that $3,800 level, then it might be something to consider. And we've also got Fastenal, um, which again, for me is a Fibonacci chart, and it looks to be breaking out uh, above 60 bucks there. Now, just a quick note as well, if you are still watching at the moment, it probably tells me that you're getting a lot of value from my analysis. So, um, please do hit the, the like button. Let me know what stocks are, I guess, on your radar. I'll, I'll maybe do another analysis sometime before Christmas. I'm actually flying out to the US in a couple of weeks, so I'm, I'm taking a well-earned break. So, yeah, feel free to, to check that out. But I do have a, a bit of an announcement um, to make just uh, over the next few minutes. Um, for those of you that are maybe looking at my work and have been looking for an opportunity to, to perhaps get in less than the, the the membership price, we're doing a massive Black Friday sale at the moment. Uh, all the, the details are front and centre on my website. Um, feel free to go and check that out, honeystocks.com provide technical chart and research. We provide, obviously, premium weekend analysis with all our premium charts, updated charts, real-time data. We've got our trade ideas. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. We have our half-time analysis. I provide access to an incredible trading community. I provide daily charting support and, of course, for those of you that are maybe interested in learning a bit more about technical analysis and maybe want to, to add some structure, um, I now include our technical analysis program free with all of our memberships. And of course, feel free to go and check out on the website how I got ahead of the, the market crash. Again, no magical hindsight indicators uh, were used in the making of that analysis. But just to kind of show you some updated uh, data. This is our trade alert that we sent out for Lithium Americas. Of course, I, I covered that chart. Cloudflare, again, back 85 bucks. That's been an absolute legend for everyone. Square Inc, again, uh, back in June, hit our upside objective. Zscaler, massive, massive performer. Antero Resources, 
back at 10 bucks, massive winner. Plug Power, this is a recent one that we sent out above 35.50 and we covered Plug Power last year as well when it ripped, you know, three, four hundred percent. So feel free to go and, and check that out on our website because I'm very unique in what I do. I don't know anybody else that, that, that does it, but I log every single one of our trade ideas that we've ever sent out to our clients and members, our, our high conviction ideas, and I log the the date, the price that has been recommended and how those stocks have gone on to perform. Um, so again, feel free to, to go and check that out. And if you are considering, you know, perhaps signing up for our services, um, make sure the types of stocks are the, the types of stocks that, that you like to buy. We're, we're not recommending penny stocks. We're not day trading. Um, it's very, very logical analysis that's geared towards technical investing, sto stroke uh, technical swing trading. There's no short term uh, day trading involved, scalping on minute time frames or stinging uh, weekly options. But um, I think we're probably a good fit if you do have maybe a, a term horizon of weeks to months. I think if you're looking to get away from day trading, it's probably a good fit. I think if you're maybe just somebody that's too busy with work, life, family, to keep on top of the market, like I guess us professionals are able to do, maybe you just want to be part of a successful community and you maybe you're tired of, of hunting around social media, whatever your deal is, feel free to, to go and check out our website. Um, some recent customer testimonials. Um, Look forward to many more years as a member. That's from Sean. Um, Nick, I'll be a member for life. Rocco, made his year. Loves the community, education. Uh, Vince, second year in a row, accounts over 100%. Uh, again, we've got options traders that, that, that obviously know their stuff. And yeah, so I can't say it any more probably than my members and, and my, my clients. Many of them have been with me three, four years now. So um, feel free to go and check out our website. Like I said, um, massive sale and offer code Friday, which I've created. So that's going to be running for a few days. So hopefully you got some value from this. And if you have stuck around to the bitter end, thank you very much for watching and perhaps i'll be able to welcome you soon but enjoy your weekend everyone and i'll pick up with you all soon thanks